We're going to talk about multiplicity, which is what pattern is your peak in an NMR spectrum. And this is where I like to give a little shout out to a very nice man that's no longer with us, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers had a great TV show. Which the kids loved him and they loved him. Of course, he was justified. He was a great man. And his favorite catchphrase was, won't you be my neighbor? Okay. So we need to know what a neighbor is in the context of NMR spectroscopy. Neighbor has a very exact definition. So don't, don't try to expand it. In fact, my definition will explain why these are always singlets as well. My explanation is going to cover it, but students forget. Neighbors are hydrogens on adjacent carbons. End of definition. So you can't be a neighbor if you're not attached to carbon. That's understood by my definition, right? Okay. So neighbors, you know, it's a two way relationship, neighbors, right? If I'm the neighbor of this guy, I say he's my neighbor. He's the neighbor of me. He says I'm his neighbor. And we talk to each other. We have very limited conversations, though. The only conversation we have is, uh, hey, which way are you spinning, dude? That's the only conversation we ever have. It's a pretty boring life, okay, this conversation between neighbors, okay? Because you do remember a spinning proton causes a magnetic field. And you already knew magnets influence other magnets. And you know the big influence in this experiment is always, what's that electromagnet doing to me? Because that's the one that makes you have a very different energy than your twin that has the opposite spin, right? So somebody that's in my type, in these examples we're doing A, B, C, D, E, where those were types, right? So if somebody in my type is spinning this way, he's going to be stabilized by the big electromagnet, which was pointing the same way. And if somebody's spinning this way, he's being destabilized by the same electromagnet. That's the big magnetic influence in the experiment. But there's also small influences that cause patterns. Because your neighbor, he's a little magnet. And he causes you to say, OK, are you with the big magnet or are you against the big magnet? That's all I care. Because if you're with the big magnet, I think the big magnet's bigger than he is. Because it doesn't matter where the magnetic field comes from, it adds to the magnetic field overall. So if your neighbor's spinning like this and that makes his magnetic field line up with the neighbor, uh, sorry, with the electromagnet, then you just, you feel that there's a bigger electromagnet out there. So now your gap gets bigger between your spin and the, the more stable spin. That's the one you're resonating, remember? You're resonating from the bottom energy, the stable energy when you're lined up, and the unstable energy when you're not lined up anymore. Okay? So that will cause your position to shift higher with a higher PPM. I remember, we were looking up PPMs just a minute ago. Didn't explain them, though. You're going to read about that. Okay? The only question for this multiplicity that matters is how many different energy states in terms of magnetic energy that your neighbors have. And it's predictable based on what's called neighbors plus one rule. So if you know the number of neighbors next door, that means they have n plus one energy states that either are with the magnetic field or against the magnetic field or half and half. Like the right with, like if one's up and one's down, that's the same stability as having them not even present, right? But that's a state. So just energy state is N plus one. You write down the number N plus one. What is N again? Number of neighbors. It's really easy to do. Understanding it's the hard part. I leave that to the other video. So A, how many neighbors does A have? One, what's one plus one? Two, the pattern, not surprisingly, is called a doublet. All right, I'll write it all down. One plus one. One, that's what doublet means. 
one plus one. You don't need to write that here. Doublet is all you need to write there. In fact, you don't even need to write that there. On the same question on your test, I have short forms you can use here. The letter D is on the list. I'll write them out here, but on the test, please use my short forms, the one letter short forms. I don't even need to see the one plus one. I just need doublet, because that's what you'll be drawing on our activity after the next activity. Hope we get to it today, but I thought we can get B, careful. The A guys are neighbors. The C guys are both neighbors too. But the F guy is not a neighbor. You know, neighbors are H's on adjacent carbon. F doesn't qualify. So, what, no, I've got three that are called A. I've got two that are called C. What, what's the total? Five. What's five plus one? Six. Name, please, for what you think five plus one pattern is called. Plus one equals sextet. It'll have six little peaks in the pattern. That's what that means. Double it means it'll have two little peaks in the pattern. C has a neighbor called B. C also has another neighbor called D. That's two neighbors, correct? Two plus one is triplet. And D, six neighbors called E. Do you agree there are six E's? And uh, two more neighbors called C. That's eight. Eight plus one? Yeah, a nine net or a non net. Or an N, because that's what it says you can use as the short form. And E, E has only the neighbor called D, doesn't it? I want to point out those E's are not neighbors to each other, are they? No, they're not attached to each other. They're attached only to the carbon that has the H labeled D. And that's only one of those guys. So one plus one, doublet. And every time you have alcohols or amines, don't do neighbor plus one. What do you just write? Singlet. Uh, e. Oh, E has the one neighbor called D. Maybe you should write out E so you know. CH is not E. These are the E's. CH3, CH3. How many neighbors does each of the CH3s have? Just one. Don't tell me it's got two. No. Each of these has one neighbor. Each of these has one neighbor. What's one plus one? It's two. Just a reminder that was D and E. Okay. A has three neighbors called B, and there's no H's on this carbon down here. So three is your total. Three plus one is four. I'm just going to write quartet. Can I just can I go to that level now? And I'll just write you know up on you know quartet. I'm going to write Q. And B. B has two neighbors called A. What you got for that? Triplet. Triplet. T triplet. This stuff I'm writing up here will be on the test already, so you don't have to. You don't have to explain your short forms. Use my short forms. C has only one neighbor called D. Doublet. D has a neighbor called C, and on the right side there's no more neighbors, so triplet. And E has E has zero neighbors. No. Yes, zero plus one equals singlet. E would be doublet. Don't be writing those. They'll be written for you. Okay, so finally we finished this activity. Uh, next one we draw when I trade with you. In fact, I won't even trade, uh, will be the drawing of the spectrum.